Yes, ma'am. These are um, reprints of the digital images that I photographed of the toolbox on that truck and the contents therein. Okay, Your Honor, it's time to say we just put 175 and 191 in evidence and publish at the appropriate time. Any objection? No objection. Without objection, 175 through 191 over there. Thank you. Lieutenant, I'm showing you 175. That's the only one I'm going to publish at this time. What is that a picture of? It's a picture of a pack of what um, swish of sweets. It's like a small cigarette cigar type of thing. Okay. And that photograph is inside the toolbox of the truck. And are, are you familiar um, when you were looking through the truck um, with what the defendant bought from the Walmart the morning of 12-18? Um, I am not completely familiar, no, ma'am. Okay. Now, so you searched the inside of the toolbox and the inside of the truck and the took, documented the outside of the truck, correct? That's correct, yes. Okay, at that time, did you take any swabs from the truck in an effort to find DNA? No, I did not. Okay. And this was... What date? Around what date? This is, uh, um, I'm going to tell you exactly what date it was. Okay. This was on December 30th, okay. 2013. Okay, and at that time, you didn't take any swabs of any kind? No, ma'am, and there's a reason why I didn't. Okay, and were you able to get in the truck December 20th? No, ma'am, I was not able to get in the truck on that date. Okay. I was told that, um, I, that I couldn't search the truck. Okay, now I'm going to show you 192, 193, 94, 194. Will you tell the court um, if you are familiar with these items? Yes, I most certainly am. And did you initial 192? I did. Okay, and are these um, photographs and video that you found that were of evidentiary value? Yes, I did. And are you familiar with the Moore's residence? Yes, I am. Okay. And are those still shots from the Moore's residence 193 and 194? 193 and 194 depicts... Yes, or no? yes. Okay. And 192, is that video from the Moore's residence? Yes, ma'am, it is. And did you recognize the people in the video? Yes, ma'am, I did. And did you document that portion because you considered it of evidentiary value? Yes, ma'am, I did. And does that contain the information as to why you did not swap the truck at, on December 28th or 29th? Yes, it does. Okay. At this time, Your Honor, the state wants to admit 190, actually before I admit it, Lieutenant, I want to ask you before I admit it, I've asked you about swabbing, why didn't you swab, and if that evidence shows why you did not swab. It does, in fact, show that. Okay. And what does it show? 192 is excerpts from the home surveillance system that the Moors had in their home, and it shows cameras outside the residence. Publishes, publishes what the camera showed, which is what the exhibit is. You objected. I think these are, these are new photographs, correct? Have not been entered into evidence. I understand. That's what I asked you. You objected to her telling you why you didn't. Not at this point. She's, she's going into what the. What the I understand is. that. Sustain the objection if you want to be. Certainly, Your Honor. This time the state wishes to put 192, 193, and 194 into evidence. Any Thank you. Now, 
before I put the video in there, I want you to tell us what you saw on the video as to why it would have evidentiary value to you. This DVD is a copy of the video surveillance system that was in the Mora's house. This video surveillance system captures images both inside and outside the house. The cameras were placed on the outside of the house, but at various times during the entire video, you see Mr. Moore holding the cameras and installing them in locations outside the house or within the house to view the out, <clears throat> excuse me, to view the outside. And what do you see? And you see the outside surrounding area of the house. The cameras all point in different directions, and there's a, there are several cameras that were of particular interest to me. The date on the camera system for the day that, that I um, viewed this, the date on the camera system tells me it was December, um, uh, December 23rd, not 2013. That's what the date on the camera Th That's what the date on the system says. Okay. Um, I went through that system and, and documented several times and camera angles that were of particular interest to me. In one of the camera angles, it faces the front of the residence. And, then, and on that particular day, on, on what the camera system says is 1223, that black pickup truck, that black Ford F-150 is parked in the driveway and it is being cleaned extensively. The outside, particularly of the um, front doors and the, and the rear passenger doors, the interior crew compartment of that truck is being cleaned extensively. When I say extensively, it goes on for several hours of them cleaning the car. What also is fairly unusual to me is the rags that they're cleaning the car with are then burned in a burn pile in the yard. And that's another camera angle that's there. So I'm looking at Sydney Moore, Tammy Moore, um, Ashley, and Ashley's boyfriend cleaning that truck extensively. And then I'm looking at them taking those rags that they're using to clean the truck with and bringing them over to a burn pile and burn them. Okay. Now, let me ask you this. That was sometime before you took the truck on the 28th. That's correct. Would it have done you do you believe you could have collected anything of evidentiary value as far as swabs after that truck had been cleaned for hours? That's why I did not swab the truck on December 30th, because based on what I saw on that video, that truck was clean better than I would clean my own vehicles. Okay. Now, did it look that clean when you took it in the evidence on the 28th? No, ma'am. No, at that point, what you saw on, on those pictures a few moments ago, uh, the exterior of the truck appeared to be clean. The inside had um, debris, candy wrappers, cups, um, crackers and stuff strewn about. So, uh, you know. So clearly it wasn't spotless on the 28th. No, ma'am, it was not. Okay. And this clearly was not a vehicle that was kept spotless all the time. Not to my knowledge, no, ma'am. Okay. Now, I'm going to publish 192, but before I do, what's 193 and 194? Okay. Also within that <clears throat> video surveillance system they had in their home, there are times, as I said before, where Mr. Moore is installing these cameras throughout the house to see the perimeter of the house. And on at least one occasion, probably more than that from, from his movement throughout the house, he goes up that very staircase that I told you was to the left of the front door as you walked in. And remember if I said I had seen a camera at the top of the staircase, but I wasn't able to capture it? Um, when Mr. Moore is going up the staircase with the video camera, the cameras were on. 
So he was capturing images and going slowly frame by frame through that system, I found the indications on the same spot of the wall and it's unique because it's painted where you can see a camera mount and a hole in the ceiling where a camera had been prior to this new system that he is installing. So that's what was important. And these two pictures show that area. I'm going to ask you to step down, Mr. Uh, Stair, 193 and 194. As you can see, this is a mount. And on the same photo over there, it's a mount. And there's a hole in the center of the mount. And you can see the painted mark on the molding around it where an object had sat in that area of the ceiling. That's the exact place that I had observed a camera in that stairwell on the 20th when I was in the residence the first time. And this shows him putting up a new camera system. And, and during this date and time that's on the camera system here is when Mr. Moore is walking through the house carrying these new video cameras and installing them to be able to look at the perimeter of the house. And in doing that, he captures the area that I had said the camera was in prior to that okay. uh, in an older system. And the new camera system would not have captured whatever happened the morning of the 18th? No, ma'am. The new camera system wouldn't because it was installed much later. Okay. When you say much later, you mean a few days? A few days, yes, ma'am. Okay. But whatever system they had before may have captured it. Yes, ma'am. This time, Your Honor, I'm going to publish 192. Um, and if you don't mind, um, the lieutenant has already told us this tape is several hours, so we're going to play it and fast forward if nobody play has an objection. You still tell what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, what, what you asked me is not uncommon. Because what matters is each, either side should have to play whatever portion they want. The exhibit has been admitted in its entirety. When you go to your jury room, you will watch the whole thing. That's up to you. And they will publish only certain portions of it for their purposes right now. But that does not exclude you from looking at the whole thing. But don't read any, anything into that. That's just an extra thing. That's what's the whole purpose. Who are these individuals? Can I step down? Sure. Okay. All right, what you're looking at here is a camera on the face of the house looking out into the driveway. If you'll notice right here is the camper that I showed you in the still shots earlier. This is a trailer that was in front of the pickup truck in the still shots from earlier. And behind it is the black Ford F-150 pickup truck. In the, in the foreground down here is um, Tammy and Sidney Moore, Tammy's sister Ashley, and her boyfriend, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the name. Okay. And the two is this the truck coming back to the residence? Yes, ma'am. When you saw the truck leave a moment ago, it was about an hour and a half, according to the clock on there, from the time it left until the time it returned. Okay. Now, this, when they're going to start cleaning the truck? Yes, ma'am. The truck backs in now and roughly in about 15 minutes from the time they returned home. They're bringing some groceries and stuff, it looks like, or some type of, of um, soft bag packages back into the house. And then immediately after that, they begin cleaning the truck. It would appear, you'll see them walk towards the door, it appears like it's shopping bags from a grocery store or something of that nature. As the grocery bags. And then right after that is when they start cleaning the truck.
during, during this time frame, you can see movement by the doors of the truck, and, and you can see a considerable amount of time being spent cleaning the doors, the door panels, the insides of the vehicle, and so forth. And about 30 minutes into them cleaning the truck, um, Sydney starts a burn pile over in the side yard and starts burning some of the rags that they're cleaning with and it continues throughout the whole time they're there. Asked yes, um, it, watching the video several times, it's, Tammy Moore is on the passenger side of the vehicle pretty much intently cleaning at the passenger doors. Sydney's on the driver's side of the vehicle. You see them kind of come back and forth at points, but for the most part, Tammy Moore is on, on the passenger side of the vehicle, and the vehicle is backed in, as you can see, and Sydney Moore is on the driver's side of it. And they're both cleaning? Yes, ma'am. And I looked at it several times and looking at the burn pile, trying to determine if it looked like, you know, paper towels or cloth towels. And you'll see in the burn pile where some of the items are, are thrown on top of a fire that's already burning, and it almost like smothers it out, um, where, the, where the items had to be picked up to let the fire pick up again, which leads me to believe it was towels and not, um, like cloth towels and not paper towels. And when we're watching, who are we looking to start the fire? Uh, Sydney goes over and starts the fire about um, so somewhere around 30 minutes into the start of the cleaning of the truck. Okay. Just before Sydney starts the fire, on, on the time on, on the clock on there, it's somewhere around 16.30 or representing 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, a few moments before, he walks over to the passenger side where Tammy is, gets a bunch of rags from her, and that's what he takes over and starts at the burn pile. You just saw Sydney walk across the camera on the left. Now it should split to the other area of the yard where the burn pile is. And if you look in the upper portion of that video frame, you'll see where the burn pile is. And that, that camera's facing what would be like the side yard of the house to, to the side beyond where the camper was parked. Okay, right there in that, about the center of the screen right now is Mr. Moore coming over with a handful of rags or something to burn. And the reason why you had to split cameras is because when he walked past the front of the camper in the other view, he switches to another camera. That's why I brought it to this angle so you'd see it from here. They're still over cleaning on the truck while he's over here starting a burn pit. <clears throat> now it just switches back to the driveway area. <clears throat> yes, ma'am, it is. So you just followed him from over there to over here? Yes, I picked him up leaving from the side yard area and that's why we switch back into this camera now. And as you can see from, from the, the time that's showing on here, there's a considerable amount of cleaning that occurred in the passenger compartment of that truck. Um, that seems to be where their point of focus is on that vehicle is cleaning in, in the four door, inside the, you know, the passenger compartment inside the four doors of that truck. Right now we'll split back to that other angle in the side yard of the burn pit and you'll see them take more stuff over to that burn pit and throw it on there. Does that conclude the 
Yes. The of the truck and the burning. Yes, ma'am. You, you see there, um, just a moment ago, um, she, she, Tammy Moore walks off camera to the right, and she goes back over towards the driveway side of the house. And that ends all of the washing and burning. Yes, ma'am, that I've got from there, yes. Now, Lieutenant, let me ask you something. Um, did you see um, the defendant get out of shop vac? You, you see them um, at various points. They're out there with a pressure washer at the truck and, and, at, the, and, and at the street. Um, they're cleaning extensively throughout the inside of the truck. Um, and, and to me, it looks like the truck is being vacuumed out as well. Okay, so would it have been possible for you to collect touch DNA on a truck that had been vacuumed and cleaned extensively? Not likely at all. I mean, based on, based on what I've seen on that camera system, it's obvious um, that so much time was spent cleaning any chance of touch DNA, hairs, trace, fibers, anything of that nature is, is not going to be something that we're going to find. And how long have you been doing crime scene? Probably 25, 30 years. Okay, and would you expect to be able to collect any evidence from a vehicle after it had been cleaned for two hours? N not the way that vehicle was cleaned, no. I wouldn't expect to find anything there. Let me ask you something. Could you have been able to potentially get DNA from the rags that were used to clean the truck? Yes, ma'am. Once the rags were burned, could you have gotten any evidentiary value? No, they were destroyed in the burn pile. There was nothing that was going to be um, of any value to us at that point. Okay. And again, all this was done before you collected the truck 1228. That's correct. And you couldn't get in the truck 1220? No. Miss um, Moore would not let me have access to the truck on the 20th. Okay. So but by the time you got it, it had been cleaned? By the, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. By the time. Let me ask you this, um, Lieutenant. How about the camera system? With the camera system that was up on 12-20 when you first went out there, do you believe that would have been of evidentiary value? I, most certainly that would have been of value to us, yes. Okay. And did you view when they first started putting up this camera system? Yes, I did. And was that after 1220? Yes. Um, um, there was a point in time where detectives from my agency went out to do a search warrant on a house to get a camera system. And they were informed that the camera system that was in the residence on that date had just been purchased and, be, and had been installed. So that camera system that they saw on that day is the system that you just witnessed and that's not the same system that would have been in the house on the 20th when I was there. Okay. Would you have wanted the system that was there on the 20th? Yes ma'am, most certainly. Okay, and would you have wanted to swab the truck prior to them washing it? Yes. Okay. And the washing of the truck and the new system came all after you showed up on the 20th? That's correct. It was after the 20th. <clears throat> Lieutenant, let me ask you this question. Uh, you were at the Moore residence with consent of Ms. Moore on the 20th, correct? With consent of Ms. Moore on the 20th, that's correct. In other words, you and Officer Squires uh, and Cobble and Hardy all showed up together, correct? In separate vehicles, but yes, at the same time, thereabouts. Okay, you didn't announce that you were coming, correct? No, we, we came from the boat landing at Peachtree and went directly from Peachtree up at Highway 814 to the, to the Moore residence. Okay. She was under no obligation to let you three officers in her house at that point? No, sir. We were there under, we were there cert, purposely as a cursory investigation into a missing 
young lady. Okay. But you were, and I know you've desi- you said that they were not a suspect at that point, but you were at least there searching specifically for something related to Heather Elvis. Is that safe to say? We were trying to find something that would help locate or determine what occurred with Miss Elvis. That's correct. Okay. But that, so that was the purpose of your uh, presence there, was specifically looking for anything that may indicate a link between the Moore residents and Miss Elvis. Is that fair to say? purposely looking for anything that would help us find where Miss Elvis was. I, I, I wasn't myself looking for any link between anyone. I'm trying to find a young lady who's missing. Okay. So again, but, but the purpose that you're there is you're looking and helping you find Miss Elvis. You're looking for something in that house that would help you find specifically Miss Elvis. It, it could be information. It could be anything. Some, you know, anything that was said or offered to us as far as an, um, any information that could have been helpful. Sure, that's, that was the, in, the intent of being there. And so you went there and you took note to try to document you know, as many things as you could, correct? If, in the standpoint of photographs, yes, sir, I photographed. Yeah, I mean, you were down to, you took pictures of the mailbox, you remember that? Yes. You took pictures of uh, the various items around the house, right? Yes. Took items of um, the various uh, clothes and different things that were inside the house, correct? From what I could see from from room doorways, yes, sir. And again, going from the front of the house unannounced to the inside of the house, taking the pictures, you noticed no items at that point that that were indicative to you of being connected to Miss Elvis, correct? Not connected, no. You saw no, uh, no items in the vicinity of the house that contained blood on them, correct? No, sir. Okay. Nothing that drew your attention. Uh, well, let me withdraw that question. Um, you mentioned that the you saw a um, camera system on the exterior as well as the interior of the Moore residence on the 20th, correct? That's correct, yes, sir. Okay. And you're, sh- you're sure that the <clears throat> camera system was there on the 20th? Yes, that's sir. That's the day I was there. Okay. Because... You're sure that one was installed prior to the installation of the system on the 23rd? I don't know when it was installed, but on the 20th when I was there, there were three cameras on the front of the house that I could see and one camera inside the house that I could see. Because that would seem to be an important note of evidentiary value, wouldn't you agree? Of course. Okay. And you were, uh, none of those, no, there's no photographs containing any of these cameras on any of these photos we just entered. That's correct. I took pictures of the house, but I did not specifically focus on any of the video cameras because I did not want to alert Ms. Moore to the fact that I realized they were there. Okay. Well, you could have, are you, with you having three officers there, could one of you have not taken photographs outside the presence of Ms. Moore? No, sir. Just I was. Ms. Moore was with me side by side the entire time I walked through that house. Okay. All right. So when she let you in the house, if these, folk, if these cameras were there on the 20th, then she would have known that you would have seen them, right? Because you were there in her house. I don't know whether she knew I seen them or not. I'm just telling you a factual statement that I saw four cameras on the house. But these, according to you, these were not concealed cameras. These were out in the open, correct? That's correct. They were out in the open. Okay. So if anybody walking by, according to you, they, you would have seen them, right? Perhaps, um, depending. Uh, the outside cameras were difficult to see because of the foliage, the trees that were in the way. The inside camera, there was no doubt. You know, I mean, when you walked up the staircase, it was staring you in the face. Okay, so there would have been no need or no effort to try to conceal your attempt to take a photograph of that uh, camera because she would have known that you were seeing it, right? That's not correct, no, sir. The purpose for, for concealing the fact that of taking a photograph was alerting her. Had she known that I had seen those cameras, the system would have disappeared. Quite ironically, it did. Okay, well, let's talk about that. You as an officer, if you would have uh, found those to be uh, that important, you could have sought a search warrant at that time, correct? Yes, sir, but at that particular moment, whether or not we had the, the um, probable cause for a search warrant um, was up to the detectives to determine. I simply alerted them to the fact that I have seen four cameras that I can account for, three on the face of the house, one inside the home. Okay. Well, again, by this point, you're there to search for Miss Elvis, correct? Or search for 
evidence related to Ms. Elvis? We're, we're there to, to try and obtain any information that's going to help us to locate that young lady, yes. Okay. All right. And you notice these, you, you say you see these cameras that we don't see in the video, and they're of evidentiary concern to you, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And again, wouldn't it be entirely possible, given that you've got three officers there, for one of you to uh, stay at or near the Moore residence while another one searched or obtained a um, search warrant? No, sir. At that time, I don't believe we, we could establish enough probable cause. Bear in mind, our first dealings of this young lady being missing is on the 20th. We're, we're looking at her vehicle, we're searching a boat landing, we're searching her apartment, um, we're searching a known friend or co-worker of hers. Uh, not searching, but visiting a known friend or co-worker of hers, Mr. Moore's house. And so, did we have enough for a search warrant? I, I, uh, I'm not a judge, so I can't determine that, but I don't think I personally could have articulated at that point that it was that imperative to lock everything down. I, like I said, I let the detectives know. I let the detective supervisor, my counterpart, the lieutenant over the detectives, know that I saw cameras on the house and it may be of interest to their investigation. But on the 20th, they did not seek a search warrant at that point? Not to my knowledge, no, sir. Okay. All right. Now, again, by this point, because you, you, you're saying that you searched her residence and that you're here just sort of doing a cursory uh, review. Uh, were you ever asked to go do any such cursory review on any other residences? Uh, yes, actually, during the course of this investigation, I have probably conducted well over 100 searches um, uh, through consent and through other means of, of looking at um, areas that could potentially um, be where the, you know, where this young girl is located or, or tips that came in to, to the Horry County Police tip line, anything that indicated anything having to do with where Miss Elvis could be located, I followed up on extensively. Okay, but you had not done that as of the 20th? Then. As of the 20th, no, sir. The first time I knew anything about that young lady missing was, was the morning of the 20th. Okay, on the morning of the 20th, did you uh, go search the home of Stephen Chiraldi? No, sir, I did not. Um, now again, this, this cleaning that we've made a, a big deal about, that occurred, again, so it's two days past the morning of the 18th, correct? I can only tell you what the time was on the system that I looked at, and at the time and date on the system was December 23rd. Yeah, I'm sorry, the 23rd, so it was actually five days past the disappearance of Ms. Ellis. That would be correct, based on the 18th, yes, sir. Okay, and about three days following the time that you and Detective Squires and Detective Cobble and Hardy went to the Moore residence, right? That's correct. Again, that's based on the time that I'm seeing on the camera system. Right. As opposed to a cleaning that might have occurred immediately after you left or the fall that night or the following morning. It was three days later. I don't know exactly when it was. I'm telling you what the date was on the camera system. The date and time on the camera system was December 23rd, 2013, you know, in and around, <clears throat> excuse me, the 1600 hour, the four, four in the afternoon hour. Now, whether or not that date is correct is not for me to say. Okay. And again, that, that cleaning that we've heard a lot about, that's, I mean, it's obviously broad daylight, correct? Yes, that's correct. It's daylight, and it looks like towards the end of it, it's starting to go like to dusk where the sun is starting to go down. And the cleaning occurs um, right in the front yard, right? Well, yeah, you, you could say the front yard, but it's behind the case and house, so it's not visible to vehicle traffic coming down eight, Highway 814. Their driveway is somewhat secluded around the back of the case and house. Uh, and, and the cleaning's occurring right in the presence of the um, security system they just installed, correct? At, at somewhat of a distance, yes, sir. Okay. So it's safe to say that given the fact that it's right there in front of the uh, security cameras, uh, broad daylight in the front yard, safe to say the fact that they were cleaning this vehicle was not something they were trying to keep secret. 
I wouldn't say that. You know what? I've got a camera system on my house, and I forget it's there sometimes. Hey, you know, and I'll be walking around the house, and, and I'll be reviewing the video footage from my house, and, and it's like, oh, crap, there I am. So I can't say that, 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 you know, that they're aware of it. I mean, I forget my own systems there. But according to you, this would have just, just been installed a couple of days before, right? Well, no, there was a camera system on the house on the 20th, so I'm assuming it. This system, yes, that you're seeing, we were told was installed um, after the 20th, but there had been a camera system on the 20th, so I'm quite sure they're used to a camera system being on their house and you would forget the presence of it. Okay. So you think they just forgot it was there? I just don't think they paid it any attention. I don't pay the ones on my home any attention. Okay. We also made an issue out of this um this burn pile in the backyard. Safe to say some people keep a burn pile for burning trash, particularly in the unincorporated sections of the county? Yes, sir, I, I believe they do. Okay, so that's not an uncommon thing to have a burn pile in the backyard, particularly in the unincorporated sections of the county. It's not uncommon at all, but I, I don't burn the rags that I clean my car with. That's just me, but I don't, you know, that seemed kind of unusual to me when I, these are all pieces of what draw my attention to an object. You know, I'm looking at things for, I look at things in a different light than most people do. I'm looking at trying to solve crimes or trying to solve mysteries and anything that's going to help me get to that conclusion. Um, you know, when I see somebody washing a car, it doesn't raise a red flag to me. When I see them spend that much time on the interior of a car, or a vehicle, that raises a flag to me. When I see them take the very cleaning rags that they're cleaning the vehicle with and burn them, a red light just lit up. Even though, even though they've already, um, even though burning trash, burning items, things like that is not uncommon, right? No, they're not burning trash, they're burning ta towels. It's in, a, it's in a burn pile in the backyard, correct? To the side yard of where they're standing, yes, sir. Safe to say that's their regular burn pile for household trash and other items, correct? I would think it could be, but there's also garbage cans in, in the front of the house. As you saw in that video, there's a, um, a trash can in, you know, at what would be the back of the um, camper, and there's also a, another, um, like a recycles bin. So like most people, I got trash cans at my house. I, I don't burn anything in my yard unless it's something I don't really ever need. You can't testify as to how often or how they uh, dispose of their trash in the burn pile? The no, sorry, sorry. I can't. No. Nope. All right. Now, you also, whenever you arrived there, the F-150, was that the only vehicle at the Moore residence? No, sir. The camper was there as well, and then that trailer that you see in that video was also there. Well, I mean, That's on the 20th now I'm speaking about. On the 20th when I got right. The black F-150 was parked in the driveway. There was a trailer in front of it and the camper was to the right of it, um, that, that pull-along um, prowler camper or whatever whatever model it is, I'm not too sure. Well, other than, other than the sort of camper trailer we saw and the tow trailer that we saw, there were no other uh, automobiles at the Moore residence, is that right? Not at the Moore residence, and I can't specifically say what was in the driveway next to it, but on the 20th, as I mentioned, we were allowed to go into the house and, and look around, I took photos, um, Tammy Moore even was kind enough to open the camper up. She unlocked the camper and allowed me to step into the doorway of the camper and take a couple of pictures inside of it. When I asked about the black truck, she said, no, I don't have the keys for the truck and you can't look in that. Okay. And Sydney wasn't there, correct? To my knowledge, he was not, no, sir. Okay. Do you know if he had the keys with him? I don't believe he did because I believe he was at the police department being questioned by the detectives and, and Ms. Moore drove that truck back to the house while he was at the police department being questioned. Well, did you see or make take note of the keys being there at the Moore residence? Sir? You didn't, you didn't see or observe the keys to the F-150, correct? I didn't, but Tammy drove that vehicle back from the police department to the house the day. on the 20th. And so then, she should have had the, the keys for it when when I asked about it, and she said it was locked and didn't want to let me look in it. Tell me this, did you, you were still able to observe the exterior of the F-150, correct? Yes, sir. And did you find anything of evidentiary value on the exterior of the F-150? No, sir. Again, I, I was there under consent, so I wasn't free to start 
taking swabs or lifting fingerprints or anything of that nature from, from the vehicle. And at that time, I, I, don't, I didn't have a reason to. I didn't have any knowledge that the vehicle had anything um, of importance to me at that particular moment. We were there, like I said, to try and gain information that was going to help us. Where was, or do you know where Miss Elvis's vehicle was at this time? Yes, sir, it was at Sly Fox Trail at her parents' house. That was not brought into um, Horry County Police custody at, during this time period, correct? No. On the 20th, no, sir, it was not. Okay, so just to be clear, by this point, between you and Miss Domagauer, uh, Miss Elvis's car has been uh, inspected and evaluated, correct? Basically, bear in mind, we're, we're unaware on the 20th of, of, of a crime being committed. It's not a crime to go missing. Um, we're there searching or trying to locate a missing person. So our initial look at that car on Sly Fox Trail, you know, my questions were, how did the vehicle get from the landing to Sly Fox Trail? That was explained to me. Um, we then photographed the car in the driveway and did some preliminary things to the vehicle that I would do on any vehicle that I was going to deal with. We, we took DNA swabs from the door handles, the steering wheel, the gear shift, things of that nature that were gonna help me identify who drove that vehicle or who may have been, been behind the wheel of it. And, and looking at the vehicle, obviously you wanna look at it for a number of reasons to see if there's anything about that vehicle that can indicate the size or number of people that may have been in it. Okay. All right. And eventually you uh, took possession and evaluated Sydney's F-150, correct? Yes, sir. Eventually we took that. Eventually we took Miss Elvis's car also and brought that in. Okay. And you obviously searched the Moore residence, correct, multiple times? Yes, sir. Um, I believe we searched it on at least one other occasion, okay. but that was with the search warrant at that time. Okay. And you obviously searched Peach Tree, Peach Tree Landing, correct? Extensively, yes, sir. Okay. So between, let me go through this, you found no evidence of Mr. Moore in uh, Miss Elvis's car, correct? I, I'm sorry, I don't understand that. You found no physical evidence linking Mr. Moore in Miss Elvis's car. No, sir, not that I'm aware of. And in Sydney's F-150, there was no evidence linking him to Miss um, Elvis having been in that car? There may have been, but by the time I was able to do anything with it, obviously from the video, there was no point in trying to obtain any DNA or anything from that vehicle. It had been cleaned out. Okay, so, that's, so that's a no, we ultimately did not. No, sir, yes, yeah, no. And again, you went through um, Sydney's house, correct? On on another occasion, well, on the twentieth, yes. On a, I'm going to call it a brief walkthrough of the house, and then at a later date under a full search warrant, yes, sir. And at some point, you utilized uh, use of cadaver dogs during subsequent searches of the Moore residence, didn't you? Yes, we did. And those results indicated nothing of evidentiary value. The cadaver dogs were used on the grounds outside the house. Now you got to bear in mind. This is months later. Um, so any type of DNA or anything like that that's outside is going to be degraded, and, and the chances of finding it obviously have, de have greatly decreased as opposed to being able to do it at an earlier time. Okay. Again, so that's a no? That no, no yes, sir. And again, there was no you found no evidence of Sidney Moore um, at Peachtree Landing? connected to Sidney Moore when you did that search? I found nothing of him at the landing, no, sir. Okay. Of course, you don't. Yes, sir. I'm going to drink this whole picture here. <laughs> Yes, 
Lieutenant, did Mr. Bouchette ask you several questions about the dates and times when what was done? When you, when you went to the car, when you took some pictures, when you did this? Yes, ma'am. Okay, if you don't mind, um, I'm going to show you a calendar. Can you give me these? Could you mark this for me real quick? Sure. That's a big calendar. 196. Calendar. Um, is this a calendar for... Um, I'm showing you now, 196, the calendar for November and December of 2013. Yes, ma'am, I'll assume the, the, the days and dates are correct. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, Your Honor, at this time, the state wishes to put 196 into evidence so Mr. Um, Sister can point out some dates. Objection, Your Honor. Uh, he's not been able to establish, and I can't tell if that's the... Um, I don't know what the purpose is. I don't know what the relevance is either. I don't know. It depends beyond the scope of the cross. It's a regular thing. I don't Lieutenant, there were several um, important dates that you gave this jury about when you were at the house. Do you remember that? Yes, ma'am. Um, when did you go to the Moore residence for the very first time? Okay, as I stated earlier, my entire investigation linked up with the detective division from the county police all began on December 20th. And I don't know what day of the week it was or whatever, um, but December 20th is when the investigative division of the police department was notified that this young lady was missing. She went missing on December 18th, so two days before. Um, Did you go to the defendant's house? On the 20th, I was at the Elvis residence in, early in the morning, looked at her car, was at the Peachtree boat landing for the first time on the 20th after leaving the Elvis's residence, sent someone to Heather Elvis's apartment from my division to get a look at the apartment and try and determine Bear in mind, we're trying to find this young lady. We were trying to do anything we can do to locate her. So we're at the, the Elvis house. We're at the Peachtree Landing where she was last reportedly to have been. We're at her residence on, on uh, um, River Oaks Drive. And later that afternoon is the first time I go to Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Moore's residence, Sydney and Tammy Moore, is again on the 20th, yes. To the defendant's residence on 1220, do you see cameras already installed on the home? Yes, ma'am, you do. On the 20th, there is a camera looking at the face of the house. There is a camera on the left corner, the right corner, and on the center gable in that very top peak of the center of the house in the front. All three of those cameras appeared to be looking towards the front of the house or towards the side yard where you would have seen in the second set of videos that burn pile and so forth. And in the second set of videos, we would have seen the truck parked um, and, and the camper parked in the driveway. So that was on the 20th. And inside the house was a fourth camera that was in the stairwell going up the stairs. It was right at that green section of wall where the where the wall was kind of like two-tone paint that they hadn't finished it. Pardon me, it's green paint, a lighter color paint, and the white crown molding at the ceiling. And you can clearly see, uh, I could clearly see that day on the 20th that there was a camera lens there. Now, when I looked at the video from the system, the newer system that had been installed in the house, is when I see Mr. Moore go up that staircase with the new cameras powered on, you know, and you kind of get a feed of somebody walking through. It's like you're getting seasick. You're walking through the room and, and he's carrying a video camera that's showing live and I'm looking at this thing and, and all of a sudden I see the green wall and I stop the recording and I look. 
and I start going frame by frame. And that's when I see the pictures that you see there in those two exhibits of a mounting bracket and the hole in the ceiling. And that is the exact location that I had seen the camera in. The paint is the same as it was the day I was there on the 20th. And the location where that mark is is exactly where I saw it on the 20th. And now, this is just a hole. Correct. Okay. And now this is a new camera system, <clears throat> pardon me, that was purchased after the 20th and installed based on this date somewhere before the 23rd. And I'm going based on, I'm sorry, <clears throat> this one is 1222. So it's purchased and being installed on, according to this date, 1222. So two days after I saw the initial system. Okay, so 12:22 is the date on the camera. That's what the camera is saying. Now I can't tell you if that's the exact date and time. That's the date and time that I'm observing on the system. Okay, and this is when you see him first trying to, or not trying, but first installing the cameras. That's correct. That's when I see him installing the cameras that I'm told are a new system. Okay, and you don't know, like a lot of home surveillance, if this is the correct date or not. You just know this is what's showing up on the camera. That's the date that's showing. Now, I will say this. I've got a camera system in my house, as I mentioned to the defense a moment ago. Um, um, the date on the screen is set by the administrator or the person who runs the system. So when I installed my own camera system, I don't even know what date it had until I corrected it to the correct date and time based on, you know, what, what I would take off of my cell phone, say. Okay, so when you're first putting it up, it's just whatever date and time. Yes, yeah, it, it, it could be whatever. And particularly if you're, if you're tying it into a, a network or a computer system, it... it Objection, Donald. As to any his testimony about the network systems or the operations. Any objection? He doesn't have any idea. It was 602 what the system is Yes, sir. Let me ask you something. What's the camera stamp on when they are cleaning the truck? 12 23 2013. Install or something to indicate what that date is for? I'm going to object under asked and answer the thing. She went to that. The Jewish heard all this. I understand. Listed and they they have they have a mind to they can recall this stuff. Right? Thank you, Judge. Okay, you, you may write those things down for your argument all you want to okay. remind. Okay, and just one last day so I'm clear, because we've talked about so many, um, and my co-counsel was telling me earlier I had the wrong date. When did you photograph the truck? Um, the date that I photographed the truck is December 30th of 2013. So 10 days after I first started into this investigation. Okay. And, and seven days after the date of when that truck was being cleaned according to the, the um, timestamp on the, on, on the video surveillance system in the residence. Um, no further questions, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. At this time, the state would call Jimmy Schroering. And, Your Honor, I don't anticipate you know, Mr. Schroering to be a lengthy witness. I don't anticipate Mr. Schroering to be a lengthy witness. Judge, your right hand, place your left hand on the Bible. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the evidence you're about to give the court in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to help you, God? I do. Thank you. Please be seated. Okay, 
Just state your full name and spell your last name. Jimmy Schroering, S-C-H-R-O-E-R-I-N-G. Mr. Schroering. And if I pronounce that wrong, I will pronounce it wrong, so I'm sorry in advance. No um, worries. <laughs> where are you employed, sir? Uh, I work for a company called DME Forensics. And what do you do for DME Forensics? I'm the founder and chief technology officer. Um, and what do your duties entail? What, what, is, what do you uh, do for DME? Uh, so, uh, we're a technology company, but we also provide professional services. Um, our software products help uh, recover video from surveillance systems, and then in cases where software isn't enough to answer the question or recover the video, we provide professional services to do that. Well, tell me a little bit about your education. What kind of education do you have, Mr. Schroer? I have a bachelor's degree in computer networking, as well as two associate's degrees uh, from Strayer University. And let's go into your experience for just a little bit. Um, tell me about your experience starting as far back as you can remember. Uh, I got my start in forensics in 2003 working for the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation. I was a computer forensics technician uh, and then eventually a forensic video and forensic audio examiner. Um, and then after uh, about 2009, I worked for Target Forensic Services, uh, Target Corporation, same store that you might shop at. Uh, they have a forensic lab that offers forensic video services for not only Target cases, but uh, pro bono work for law enforcement. Uh, and then after Target, I worked for the Forensic uh, Audio, Video, and Image Analysis Unit at Quantico for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. And then subsequent to that, you found a DME? DME? Correct, in 2013. Um, have you ever worked for the North Carolina State Bureau of Investigations? Yes. Okay, and what did you do for them, sir? I was a forensic video and audio examiner when I left in 2009. What about Intrex Internet Services? Yes, I was a network administrator. Um, were you also a PC technician? Yes. Okay. Um, tell me a little bit about any certifications you hold, sir. I'm a certified forensic video examiner uh, from the International Association for Identification, or the IAI, as well as a certified forensic video analyst from uh, an organization called LEVA, which is the Law Enforcement Emergency Services Video Association. And during the course of your career, have you ever testified? Uh, yes, approximately 20 times. How about being... Um, uh, qualified as an expert witness? Yes. And what were you qualified in? Uh, depending on the case, either uh, forensic audio analysis, forensic video analysis, uh, DVR analysis. Okay. In fact, haven't you been qualified in this very courtroom as an expert in forensic DVR analysis? Yes. Um, and during the course of your career, and you may or may not be able to answer this, about how many DVR devices have you analyzed? Uh, that, that's a difficult one from a casework perspective, probably around 50, um, but from a reverse engineering standpoint uh, for the work we do in software, hundreds, um, maybe getting close to a thousand. Your Honor, at this time I would offer Mr. Schroering as an expert in the field of forensic DVR analysis. No, sir. No objection. You will be the render of the image in that Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Schroering, um, did you have an opportunity to do any work on the case that we're here for today, the State versus Sydney Moore? I did. And, and tell us a little bit about how you became involved in this case. I was contacted by uh, Ms. Livesey uh, in May of, 26, uh, May of 2016 uh, and asked uh, by her if we could do some examinations on a DVR. And did you do, in fact, uh, uh, that examination? Yes. Um, and tell us a little bit about that examination. Specifically, what were you asked to do on that DVR? Uh, we were asked to examine the DVR and the hard drive and determine whether there was any video from December 17th to December 20th, uh, 2013, that was available uh, to be recovered, uh, as well as uh, identify if the dates and times on the video uh, that were present were accurate, and if not, if we could establish what the correct dates and times were. And were you able to fulfill that request? Uh, the analysis of the date and time, yes. There was no uh, video from that time frame that was actually able to be recovered. Were you actually able to view video that was on the DVR system, however? Yes. Okay. Um, Your Honor, if I may. Showing you now has been entered into evidence 
previously as States 38. Do you recognize that? Yes, I do. And what is that, sir? Uh, this is the digital video recorder that uh, we examined in 2016. And is that the uh, video recorder that you were able to view footage from and uh, find a correct time for, timestamp for? Yes. Okay. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, I guess the, 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 the first question I'd like to ask you about that is what was the first thing you were able to see on, on the footage that you were able to find? Um, could you rephrase that? Well, um, when you looked on the DVR, tell me what you saw. So, uh, in examining the DVR, we were able to determine that uh, there was the very first video uh, that was present had some camera movement um, that might be consistent with a uh, camera being set up, um, like a system that's being installed. Um, and then beyond that, there was, uh, I believe, several months worth of footage of various different dates and times on, on there. What about deleted footage? Were you able to find any deleted footage on that DVR system? No. And what does that in indicate to you? Uh, based on the examination, we were able to determine that it appeared that that system had been turned on, uh, started recording, and then at a certain point uh, was finally removed from service. But there wasn't any additional footage that you would find if something had said been recorded and then deleted. Um, there was no remnants of any footage. It appeared as if it had never actually overwritten any old footage from continuously being recorded. There just wasn't anything there than what was actually recorded and accessible uh, at the time it was seized. And in more layman's terms, is that the fact that there was no overwritten data or deleted data consistent with that being a newer system? Yes. Um, it, in 2013, was that an old antiquated DVR system? No. Okay, so that was an up-to-date state-of-the-art system? Uh, yeah, that was fairly new. Okay. Um, what about time frames, were you able to, to see any, are you able to look in that DVR system and see if the operator has actually changed the time stamps? Yes, we did numerous tests on uh, a system of the same exact type and uh, were able to establish how date and time changes appeared within the system and found that there was two different occurrences where the date and time was changed um, on this particular system. How do you know there were only two? How do you know there weren't 20? Uh, we did further testing to prove that it was uh, basically impossible to remove log entries that would indicate date and time changes. Uh, so the only two date and time changes that were listed in the logs for this system were the only two that were there because on our test system, we did dates and time changes and attempted numerous different ways of removing them and were never able to actually remove them. So we we're confident it was just those two date and time changes. Okay. So there were two date and time changes. Can you, can you tell us specifics about those date and time changes? Um, may I refer to my report? Absolutely. You did re uh, complete a report? Yes. Well, I'll tell you what let's do. Um, I'm going to show you now what's been marked for identification purposes. It states Exhibit This is States 195. Take a look at this and tell me what that is, sir. This uh, appears to be a copy of the report that I issued in this case. Um, is that, in fact, your report? Yes. Your Honor, I would seek to introduce States 195 in evidence. No objection, sir. No objection is Okay, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, all right, sir, with your report in hand, could you tell us a little bit about the specifics of those time changes and, and just as much as you can because you understand it better than I do? Sure. Um, so there were two specific date and time changes. Uh, the first date and time change was what we refer to as a forward date and time change. So the time was advanced, um, and that was uh, of approximately 16 hours, a little less than 16 hours uh, pushed forward. And then the second date and time change later was a reverse date and time change. We're setting the clock back, and that was almost exactly 24 hours. So it was about 23 hours and 59 minutes back in reverse. So the first one was forward, the second one was back? Correct. Okay. I want to jump to this. Were you ever able 
to make a determination as to a correct date and time stamp of a certain event, for example? Yes. Okay. Um, what event did you use in the footage to, to uh, make an accurate determination as to a time stamp? We were asked to determine uh, a specific event that on the screen of the DVR and the timestamp of the DVR said that it was uh, December 23rd, 2013 at approximately 1600 or 4 p.m. Um, and what was that event, sir? It was an, uh, multiple individuals that appeared to be uh, cleaning a dark truck. Ms. Yes. Rubin, you could pull up um, that event, 1223 at 1600 hours. Now let us see what we're looking at here. And Your Honor, this time I'm referring to states. Thank you, sir. We're not watching it. We're not watching it again, Judge, I assure you. <laughs> If you wouldn't mind if the judge will let you step down here for just one moment, sure. please, with your report in hand. Sure. And I'm going to ask you if this is the event that you used as a reference uh, to uh, um, determine a correct timestamp. Yes, it appears to be the same event that I referenced in the report. Okay. And so we're right about, we're at uh, 1223 on 2013 at 1600 hours. How did you make a determination as to a correct timestamp? Uh, it, may, it may be better if I step back to yeah. my phone. Fair time. enough. The DVR that we examined uh, at the end of the recording, the date and time was approximately correct. And since we were able to establish that there were two and only two dates and time changes, and we knew uh, that those were the only two, we could actually track back from the end time all the way through all of the recordings and establish any particular instance in time as to whether or not that time was correct, and if not, the appropriate adjustment to make for it. So you were able to basically reverse engineer the time because you knew that the end time was correct? And the fact that we uh, had no additional dates and time changes. If there was a question um, on a different type of system where dates and time changes uh, might not be able to be uh, definitively determined to be the only ones, then that would be more difficult. But in this situation, this system, we knew it was only two date and time changes, so yes. And you're confident there were only two date and time changes and you're confident in your determination of the final time stamp? Yes. And this is the event that you used to determine a, a time stamp? Uh, this was the event that we were asked to uh, determine a, a real uh, time, if you will, for this particular event as an example, but we could have extrapolated any event in the video and gotten a timestamp for that. Okay, so a real timestamp. So what you're saying is yes or no, the timestamp for this event, this trust washing at 12-23-2013 at 1600 hours is not correct? That's correct. I, your statement is correct. That okay, time is not correct. You. Okay, that is not the right time. Tell yes. the jury what time, on what day this truck is being washed, Mr. Schroeder. Uh, based on the analysis of the date and time changes, uh, that event appears to actually occur at December 22nd at approximately 1559, so almost exactly 24 hours um, in the past, uh, off by a minute there. All right, so the camera was off 24 hours. Correct. And do me a favor, Mrs. Miller, mark a line through that and change that to 21 because that's off 24 hours. Thank you very much, ma'am. Please answer any questions the defense may have, sir.
Sir, I'm going to need you to pronounce your name for me. Shroring. Shroring? Yes, sir. Okay, I apologize if I messed it up. No worries. All right, Mr. Shroring, as I understand it, your role in this investigation was, one, to view the footage on that DVR. Is that correct? Uh, yes, in the context of the main requests of recovering the video and determining the dates and time changes, we weren't ultimately responsible for watching the entirety of the footage. Okay. And your number two job here was to check the timestamp. Correct. Okay. Um, the police department can't do that? Uh, well, the police department can review the footage that's on the DVR, but establishing uh, an accurate timestamp is something that takes a, a decent amount of testing to be able to prove a hypothesis as to how those dates and time changes affect uh, the actual timestamp on the video. The SLED Internet Crimes Division could not give us a timestamp off of this? I'm not aware of the individual capabilities of that particular unit. Um, there, I know that there's not very many people uh, out there that go to quite the level we do with the analysis and reverse engineering of these types of systems, so it wouldn't surprise me if they didn't have somebody that had that uh, capability in-house. You previously worked for the SBI, right? Uh, did you say SBI or FBI? I guess either way the answer is yes. North Carolina State Bureau of Investigation, Federal Bureau of Investigation. And the SBI is the North Carolina equivalent of South Carolina SLED. Correct. Could the SBI give us the timestamp off of that DVR? Um, of the personnel that I know that are currently there in 2013, I wouldn't think that they would have had that level of experience, but that I'm, I'm not aware of their exact personnel at any given time. So. so basically, is law enforcement capable of doing the things that you did regarding this DVR? I think it would depend on the individual examiner or analyst that was asked to do it. Are, are there people out there in law enforcement that could do this work? Probably. Um, but I, I'd have, you'd have to ask me about a specific individual. Okay, I'm just wondering why they would have to bring someone in to do it. Well, I, I can say that there is, um, it, especially in 2016, um, digital forensics is a constantly evolving field and technology that has to be kept up with. Um, and even you know, 10 years ago, it was thought that you couldn't recover deleted footage from something like this. So uh, it's always an evolving uh, technology and science, if you will, that, that needs to be kept up with. And sometimes that happens more in the private sector. Sometimes it happens more in government. When were you brought on to this case? In June of 2016. Do you know the date that Miss Elvis disappeared? I do not. You were not brought on to this case back in 2013? No. Is this a new DVR or is it a refurbished DVR? Uh, I'm not aware. Not aware, okay. Now you looked at the video footage on the DVR, correct? Yes. Were you able to find any deleted video? No. Was any de video deleted off of that DVR? Uh, in my opinion, no. Okay. Did you see Heather Elvis on that DVR? No. Well, I, I wouldn't know because I, it wasn't, reviewing the content wasn't a focus of my evaluation, honestly. It, there's no reason for me to know, based on my uh, examination, what I was asked to do, uh, to pick out individuals or anything like that. Is there any video on that DVR from December 17th of 2013? No, sir. Is there any video on that DVR from December 18th of 2017, of 2013? No, sir. Now, these uh, time changes, you said that there were two time changes on the DVR, correct? Yes, sir. Did the time changes affect the footage that was on the DVR? No, it did not. So it's your testimony that there are no deleted footage, there's no deleted footage from that DVR? Correct. Okay, thank you, sir. No further questions. Read it right. Very, very briefly, Your Honor. Mr. Gallimore just asked you if there was any footage from 12-17 or 12-18. Did you hear him say that? 
Uh, yes. Um, would the fact that that uh, system being installed on 1221 make sense to you and, and explain why there's no footage from 1217 and 1218? Yes, sir. Let me ask you this other question. You said there's no deleted footage on that DVR. That's correct. Are you telling me that you can recover deleted footage from a DVR? Yes. Um, so if I wanted to hide whatever's on that DVR, the only guaranteed way to do that would be to get rid of the DVR system itself, right? Uh, the only guaranteed way, assuming it was never recovered from wherever you put it, yes. Thank you. No further questions. Read across. Is that DVR hidden? No, sir. Thank you. All right, sir. You may step down. May I be released? I will check on that for you right now. You use the switch to fix you. Very much so, you know. No objections, sir. Yes, sir. You have to ask that question. Yes. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's. Your Honor, I think Thank that would you. conclude the testimony for today. I, I would risk going over the 5 o'clock uh, deadline uh, otherwise. Thank you, Solicitor, and I promise the jury we would not do that today. Uh, we would finish it by 5 or before 5, so I'm going to honor that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for a good, hard week's work. Well, we've been very diligent, and I appreciate it. I hope you have a good weekend. I'd ask you to be in your jury room by 9.30 on Monday. Please, it's very important now, and of course you have two days in between now, and the temptation is great, but I know that you all have already demonstrated how sincere and committed you are to this process. And I want to tell you it's a privilege to serve with each one of you as a judge in this matter, because I appreciate the matter, the attention that you've devoted to it. And I want to express again how important it is with the work that we've both and everyone here has expended this week. We don't want to have to do that again. So the way to, the one way that that can be jeopardized if somebody will talk to you or, or try to talk to you and you permitted that or you had any conversation or you read anything or did any research, it can jeopardize this whole week's work of work. So please understand that. And I thank you for that. And I appreciate it. And I'll see you on Monday at 9 30. Have a good week. Thank you.